What is it like being a Jamaican in Tennessee? Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, the founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the World, I talk to Emmanuel Azan, a Jamaican who lives in Tennessee. Hi, Emmanuel. How are you? Good morning. I am blessed and highly favored. Nice, nice. So which, which part of Jamaica you come from? I'm from Clarendon. I'm from a little district called Farm in Maypen area. Oh, wow. Do you know Tweetside? Nope. All right. That's way up in the hills. That's where my family is from. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, they say it's a hole in the wall and you can't marry anybody in, this, in there because they're all cousins. <laughs> oh, I've heard that. My <laughs> wife is from Christiana. And she said the same thing about the little area from Christiana she was from. You can't marry anybody in there. <laughs> so which which school you went to in Jamaica? Um, at the time, it was called Maypen Primary. Now it's called Central. Right. I went to Maypen Junior Secondary and Maypen Primary. All right. All right. And probably name probably changed by now. So. Yes, it's now called Central. I, Central. So, yes. Nice, nice, nice. So tell us a story. How did you first get to America and, and, and then how you ended up in Tennessee? Well, my, I went to America on 10th of December, 1976. My mother filed for me and my brothers, and we all went up. And I ended up in Tennessee through the U.S. Army. I joined the U.S. Army in 1978, and after 26 years in the Army, I decided to stay here. But you know, the funny thing is, I did not want to be in Tennessee. When I got to Tennessee, I said, the day I return from the army, my truck will be packed, the trailer will be packed, I'll be leaving right then and there. <laughs> but you know, God have a sense of humor. Right. Because I've been retired since 2003 and I'm still here. Wow, wow. So what what kept you there in Tennessee? A church. <laughs> I got involved in a church. I got saved. I became a born again Christian. And I stayed because of that church and because of the family of that church. Okay. I know so, I'm a pastor. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, and I do missions to Jamaica three times a year. Every May, August, and December, I am in Jamaica giving back. Where, where in Jamaica do you do your missions? I do mission in Clarendon and in Christiana. Nice, nice. And and what's the is there a website where people can learn about joining the mission that you do three times a year? Yes, it's called KOI missions.com. Okay. KOI stands for Kingdom Outreach International. KOI missions.com. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So when you came to America the first year, was there any type of culture shock, something that kind of surprised you about America? Man, the first thing that happened to me is my mom lived in an apartment then. And they, we came in like two something in the morning. So we came in late. And the next morning, I went outside because the sun looks so beautiful, the sky looks nice and warm. So I went out in a t-shirt and a shorts. <laughs> and the door slammed, locked on me, and I couldn't get in. And it was cold. <laughs> it was freezing in December in New York. <laughs> so you got a nice, um, cold it, welcome. <laughs> it was like, welcome to the cold. <laughs> <laughs> so... It, it, is it colder there in Tennessee than New York or fear? No, Boston? it's typically a lot warmer in Tennessee because it's further south. Okay. All right. What's the cost of living like in Tennessee? Well, something is more expensive than New York. Something is less. But right now, everything has quadrupled. Price have gone up so bad right now that it's crazy. Things I used to buy last month, two months ago, Prices almost doubled. Right, right. Yeah, I, I know. Everybody talks about the eggs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, paying $6 a dozen for egg is crazy. Yeah, crazy, crazy prices. Now, talking about food, 
what's the typical food in Tennessee like? Is there like something that people in Tennessee just love? A lot of people in Tennessee love certain restaurants. I'm allergic to pork. So therefore, mm. there's only certain restaurants that I go to. Okay. But my wife is Jamaican, brother. So we cook Jamaican food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take us out of Jamaica. You can't take Jamaica out of us. All right. As a matter of fact, I had some curry chicken last night. <laughs> so, so you have to cook your Jamaican food. Or is there like a Jamaican restaurant in the area you live in? Yeah, there's like three Jamaican restaurants real, real close to us. Okay. So we are that, but typically I only go to Jamaican restaurant when I'm bringing friends. I see. Because I see. if I'm going to eat Jamaican food, my wife is the best cook in the world. <laughs> so why would I go eat somebody's Jamaican food if I want Jamaican food, you know? When your wife sees this, you're getting some points. <laughs> <laughs> No, typically, if I want to eat out, I'd go Chinese or I'd go eat steak. Okay, I see. <laughs> is, there a, is there a Jamaican community there in Tennessee? There used to be a nice one. But, you know, mm -hmm. sadly, some Car Caribbean people, not just Jamaican, some Caribbean people don't know how to hat. There's a brother here that have a, a garage that once a month he used to open up his garage and we go there, we'd we cook, we'd play them, you know, we'd play music and we'd have fun. But people just go there and do bad stuff. The last time, they've overflowed the man's toilet and didn't tell nobody. To, it, it was a mess, so he stopped it. Oh, my gosh. He, yeah, he, wow. you know, some people just don't know how to act. Yes, you know? yes. But, so, um, so, but yeah. there are people still there. There's still a, a, a community there then. Yes. How, is it big? I mean, about how many people? I, I know you can't speak for every Jamaican there, but about how many people would get together? You know, 20, 30? Well, yeah. when, when Joe used to do it, we usually have about 30, 40 there. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, we, we really don't get together like that anymore. Um, most of the, Really, I don't really have much time for socializing. Right. I, I'm, right. I'm either doing God's work in church. I do a lot of traveling. As a matter of fact, I just got back from Ghana. Oh, where wow. I was over there preaching in Ghana. Uh -huh. But the most time we see each other is at the soccer, or as we call it in Jamaica, the real oh. football oh. <laughs> at the football field. What was Ghana for you? Oh, man, I love it. That yeah. was my second time, and I can't wait to go back. <laughs> Yeah, I need to, I need to make a visit back. I, I and they I, love Jamaicans over there. Oh my gosh, you, you saw the flags everywhere. I everywhere saw flags you go, here. you see Jamaican flags on cars, buses, trucks. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Jamaican flags everywhere there. You know, just amazing how they have. Oh, we have embraced them, and they have embraced us. Yes, yes. You know, that's that's just amazing. No, what is it? What, you know, you've been in Tennessee all this time, so you must have encountered where somebody said, you're Jamaican, and they say maybe something funny, or they ask a, a weird question. What what that what is that typically like, or what's the one you encounter? Um, it's funny, but the first the first time someone say, whoa, you're Jamaican? I say, yes, I'm, I'm Jamaican. He said, you know how to cook Jamaican food? They love to ask that. Of course I know how to cook Jamaican food. <laughs> I'm from the older generation of Jamaican where your elders teach you to cook. I remember my godmother. I basically grew up with my godmother because my mother had migrated to the state. And my godmother taught me to wash, iron my uniform, cook my food. She, when I was going to primary school, I have to do my uniform myself. Wash it, iron it, everything. She said... When you grow up, you will stay with a woman because you want to, not because you have to. Wise. So she taught me to do everything. Wise, wise words, dear. Wise words. <laughs> so, you know, uh, the, the, as you said, the gener you know generations are different and, and so forth. Now, your wife moved moved from Jamaica straight to Tennessee. No, actually, my I met my wife in New York City. Okay, 
Okay. My wife was here before me, and she was friends with my sisters who came up before me. Okay, so I see. I came up on the 10th of December, 1976. I met my wife on the 16th of December, 1976. And the first word I said to her was, I love you. <laughs> Very bold. <laughs> well, the thing is, my sister sent me to go meet her because she was coming over to my house. And they was tell me how she'd be dressing. Was it a setup? No, actually, no. She was just coming and they wanted me to go help her because of all the snows and ice and on the ground. Right. So they told me what she'd be wearing, but typical woman, she changed what she was supposed to be wearing. <laughs> she was wearing something totally different. But I'm walking and I saw her and I'm just staring at her. And she said, why are you looking at me like that? And I say, I love you. <laughs> And again, I tell you, God have a sense of humor. <laughs> How many years? We've been married for 45 years now. Wow, congratulations. Thank congratulations. you. And the longest we were giving was two. Wow. That because, is you see, most... brother, when I left Jamaica, I was not the person I am now. Right. When I left Jamaica, I left with the philosophy that why buy the cow when I get the milk for free? Mmm. Mmm. So I say I would never get married. Mm. I tell everybody, there's no way I'd ever get married. Right. You now, right. 45 years later, and I'm still married. <laughs> Wise words. Wise words. So listen again, Emmanuel, I appreciate you taking the time, telling us a little bit about your journey there. What is some of the things you would suggest people see if they come to, to Tennessee? Um, you know, it could be an event. It could be, you say, you know, come to this fair or come to this event or go see this place. The thing about um, Tennessee is we got Nashville where they say is the home of music. Music, they call it Music City. Right. Uh, we have the Grand Ole Opry where everybody love, who love country music. Even as a kid in Jamaica, we used to hear about the Grand Ole Opry. You know, Growing up, we lived listen to Jim Reeves and all those guys. They are Glenn Campbell. Glenn yeah. Campbell. <laughs> they are enshrined in the Grand Ole Opry. There's a lot of things to see in Tennessee, really. Um, right. But but you said go to go go to the Grand Grand Opera. And, the Grand Ole Opry. Opry. Okay. And it's and called Grand Ole Opry. And check that out. Yes. <laughs> all right. And, and uh, you know there is um. Downtown Nashville, they got all kind of music clubs and stuff. I don't do music clubs. I don't do clubs, period. But it, it's actually a wonderful place to visit. Okay. All right. So now, let me ask you this. If you were to leave Tennessee, you head to Jamaica, you get off the plane... What is that first thing that you typically do or that first place to say I'm going to or that first thing you're going to take a bite out of? Okay, we got a routine that we do. And sometimes I bring people with me to Jamaica. Sometimes it's just me and my wife. Like on my next trip, I'm bringing some folks with me from my church. But what I typically do is my driver is another pastor. He picks me up. We drive away from the airport and we stop and we pray. Okay. We, we pray, I welcome, you know, thank God for bringing us safely. And then we go to Arborview. There's a party shop in Arborview. Mm -hmm. We go straight to that party shop and we buy party and so <laughs> Well, I don't drink the soda, so I get I drink cran water. What's what's a, what's a party shop if you want to give them a shout out here? I don't really know the name, you know, but it's just as you go into Arborview, you make that second left into the little shopping center. Right. And the party shop is on the right hand side just as you turn in. Okay, so coming from, you're coming from Kingston. From the airport. From, you're coming from Kingston or you're coming from, you're, you're, you're taking a long route across no, the island. It's just, it's just as you come from the airport where the roundabout is. Right. You go oh, straight up. Okay. All and right. the party shop is on the second little left. You know, you got those little shopping little areas there. Right. The party right. shop is right there in that second left. Okay. On the right hand side. 
Don't sound too. It don't sound too difficult to find. No, so. no, it's easy to find. All right, all right. The, okay. the only problem is you're gonna wait a little bit <laughs> to get your parties. <laughs> so you're getting that that Jamaican welcome right away. That soon come. Have yes. Some yes. You know when you say soon come, it can be ten minutes. It could be an hour. <laughs> <laughs> So winding down, what, what advice would you give anybody who is thinking of moving to Tennessee? It's quiet. And one of the big um, thing I like about Tennessee versus, say, New York, for instance, we have no problem finding parking. I have my own house. I have a two-car garage, which I really don't park in a parking driveway. But anywhere you go, there's parking. Unlike New York, where you drive around for hours trying to find park and can't find no park. And it's a lot quieter than New York. It's country living. So okay. it's nice and quiet. Nice, nice. So if you're looking for a quiet place to live, settle down, not rushing, ar looking around for parking, Tennessee is where it is. Yes, and the football is getting better. <laughs> Which one now? You're having... The real football, the one where you play with your foot. <laughs> You know, you got a round ball, I yeah. kick it, that's yeah. football. That one where they throw the ball, that's not football. <laughs> well, Emmanuel, listen, thank you, thank you again for sharing your journey to Tennessee and giving us a little bit, a little taste of advice and some, and you threw in some wisdom there. And I we enjoyed it. Thank you again. And as we say in Jamaica, a little more. <laughs> Aye, a little more. God bless you. All right. <laughs> Show some love now. Hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel. And hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a video.